Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us today for another one of our virtual meetup sessions. Um, today we're going to be talking about life in Galway following on from some of our other conversations that we've had about accommodation, what to pack, um, how to find a job in Galway. So today we're going to talk about actually how to live here and how to make a home. Um, and I'm really happy to be joined by some of our student ambassadors who I will hand you over to. Um, oh, and my name is Katie, by the way, but I think I've met a good few of you now um, at this stage through our event. Um, and welcome to newcomers. Um, so maybe Cheval, could you introduce yourself for everybody before we kick off? Yes. Hi, my name is Cheval. I am from Sydney, Australia. Uh, I am just about to enter my fourth year in uh, medicine in Galway. So I did my last three years over there and um, as part of our 3.2, 4.1 um, semesters, I'm actually out in Letterkenny, Donegal um, for placement. So it's been really exciting to see a different part of Ireland um, in this course as well. I'm not sure if there are other medical students um, here as well. Uh, and yeah, I've really enjoyed my time there. I think being an international stu student is really hard and traveling back and forth between home and Ireland has been really tricky because of COVID, um, but it's been a really great experience so far. That's great. Thanks, Chevelle. And um, Amaya, could you also introduce yourself, please? Oh, hi, everyone. My name is Amaya. Uh, I'm currently studying uh, my master's in business analytics. So I finished off with my master's in last week, I would say, when I submitted with my project. And uh, at the moment, I'm in that stage, which you guys would be in the next year when you'll be hunting for your jobs and everything. So um, so I would say, I know it's a tough time for everyone. Um, th making your call, coming here and preparing. Um, I'm, I think most of you guys would be coming here uh, in next two or three weeks, I, I, I'm assuming. So uh, I think we'll have a good healthy conversation about it. And that's it from my side. Thanks, Aaliyah. And before I start asking you both loads of questions, um, I'd just like to introduce somebody else that we have on the call with us today. So Matthew is the International Student Officer. Um, so I'll hand over to Matthew and he can tell you more about what he does and how you might connect with him um, throughout your time at NUI Global. Thank you, Katie. Uh, hello, my name is Matthew Connolly. I'm the International Students Officer for the Students' Union. Um, basically, I'm a student representative um, for the Students' Union um, for student interests. Um, so far, my position has begun in July. Um, I guess a little bit about me, I'm a law student. I'm doing a two-year LLB, so I'm, in, I'm beginning my second year. Um, I did my first semester online from California. I did my second semester in Galway, and I'm looking forward to beginning September in Galway as well. Um, but basically, I'm here to support or lead you in the right direction. Um, just I'm kind of like a buffer, and I'm here to stand for student rights as well. Um, there are a lot of issues already students have come to me with in the summer. Um, so I'm here to listen, to, to see how people are feeling. And hopefully I can help you out if you have any uh, issues. Thanks very much, Matthew. And I'm sure we'll work together now over the, over the course of the year. Um, the previous student officer to yourself, the previous international student officer, um, actually worked within the international office as well. So, um, so yeah, we touched base on a lot of things. So um, it's a great contact for you all to have in, my, in Matthew. So, um, and, and we'll have a few questions for him later on, I'm sure. So we'll get started then and we and maybe Matthew, since you lived in Galway for a time too, we could ask you some of these questions as well. Um, so I'm going to ask Shival our first question um, and I'm going to ask you, what do you do during the week when you're not studying? So I know your course is pretty intense, so maybe you don't have as much free time as you'd like, but how do you fill your time when you're not studying? Uh, so unfortunately, I wasn't one of the students I was able to get a job. Um, I think uh, the course is very, as you said, very intense. Um, so I couldn't really factor that in. Uh, I generally went on a lot of walks and I tried to do a lot of home workouts, especially since COVID. Before that, I loved using Kingfisher, which is the on-campus gym. 
Uh, they have a lot of facilities there. I used to swim um, and use the gym equipment and they have a lot of virtual and in-person classes. So I would highly recommend, I'm not sure what the COVID situation is like back in Ireland right now. Um, and I love cooking. So I used to do my groceries and try new recipes and I really found it um, a way to balance the work life and Besides that, um, they, Galway has a lot of great pubs and uh, food restaurants. So definitely go out and try Guinness if you can. <laughs> it's a fun time. So yeah, just a really healthy balance between schoolwork and um, leisure activities. Sure. Um, and I think if you are cooking, like especially with people from lots of different countries, it's a really nice way to share culture. Is, or to introduce people to your culture is through cuisine. So um, hopefully lots of you will get to experience that with your housemates maybe, or, you know, cooking up a storm for, for everybody. Um, so Amaya, your experience was a little bit different because you were, you were here for your master's, so just for the last year. Um, so you were kind of a little bit more virtual. So how did you fill your time? So uh, for me, it was, uh... It was like meeting people outside. So we uh, we had those brown bag sessions when we came in. We got to um, know people through virtual sessions. And then we started meeting people in smaller groups. And um, so for me, I think I have been the utmost optimist, I would say. Uh, I actually enjoyed it being virtual because I got more time to figure out things for myself. So um, occasionally what I used to do is I just used to um, go out to parks. Uh, like Even for my assignments, I used to go to parks or probably sometimes... I'll sit next to Salt Hill. I'll just take my laptop. I'll seek some inspiration. So um, I think that's how it went on for me. Although I do uh, feel a bit that maybe uh, sitting inside the campus would have been nice, but this experience was also not too bad because the faculties had been uh, constantly engaging with us. They um, made sure that we have all the tools, we have all the uh, necessary guidance that was required. So uh, the experience was not too bad, I would say. And uh, I would say the campus life is just one element of uh, living abroad. Uh, grocery shopping, house hunting, uh, engaging with other people, uh, searching for part-time. These facts like uh, eventually accumulate into one, uh, uh, I say like one good experience, I would say. So um, that's how it has been for me. Yeah, I think you're right. It, 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 it is all one, one whole experience, the whole part of it. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and Matthew, can I ask you, when you were in Galway for your semester, what did you do? Well, um, I got to experience Galway lockdown completely. Um, thankfully, the library was open and I, I, that was like my social outlet. I would actually go to the library just to get out of my house. Um, but Cheval and Amaya both mentioned walks. Salt Hill Prom is somehow the most relaxing, you know, like Zen place to just bring it all back. So if I ever get too stressed out, I'd walk along Salt Hill. I'd think about jumping off the diving board. I have yet to do it. Um, I'm looking forward to returning in the fall. I, I have to jump off the Salt Hill diving rock now. <laughs> um, and I'm not much of a cook. I tried, you know, a lot of restaurants were closed, but um, I think Kashmir, the Indian restaurant, I think I ordered from more than any other restaurant on my Deliveroo. <laughs> um, so yeah, lots of eating and lots of walks. Good. And now that you've said it here, Matthew, now you have to jump off the Black, Black Rock Diving Tower. Very good. Well, I have one of my questions that I've written down because I wasn't sure if we were going to be joined um, when I was making these questions, you know, by students who've been here for a couple of years or new students. And one of the things that I've written down was, have you done anything touristy in Ireland or is there anything on your bucket list? But I'm not sure over the last year, have you gotten to experience any more touristy things or are there still things that you would like to see for, perhaps if you haven't had the chance to yet? Um, I think the biggest um, one of the biggest iconic things in Ireland is the Cliffs of Moher. And I have to say, I still have not gone out there. I've been in Galway for three, four, three whole years and I still haven't um, seen that. So I think that's definitely on my bucket list of things to do. 
Um, and Dublin, you can't go wrong. There is so, so many things. I think just doing a the hop on hop off bus tours in Dublin city is a really great way to see everything. You get all the main attractions and I think it only takes a few hours to go see everything. So I would highly recommend that. How about yourself, Amaya? Do you have anything on your bucket list? Uh, well, I do have a few things on a bucket list, but um, I have visited a few places in the last uh, few months. I've done Cliffs of Moher. I visited Cork. Uh, there's a place, Cov, um, I, I think, am, am I saying it right? C-O-B-H, I think it's, yeah. it's Cov. Cove, I've yeah. been there, Cove, um, Kinsale. And um, so best experience for me was uh, experiencing a bog farm. So one of my friend's landlady, she took me to Karna. It's like a place uh, near Connemara, I believe. Uh, so uh, she took us there for a walk. I, I had no idea. I'd never seen that, um, what exactly a walk is like. So she said it's part of our culture. It's it's banned now, but I think it's allowed only in some small pockets. So I was like, um, from uh, being a student to a kid, uh, like in those few minutes, I was jumping over the bog. Like it's like soft uh, soil over which you jump. And they were like, I saw people plowing it. So. Um, that was like one of the good experiences. I think that would have been only possible if I interacted with locals. So uh, I think that was a few of the things which I experienced. And there are two things on my bucket list. One is um, skydiving near Kilkenny. And uh, the other part is um, uh, I have to, I still have to go to Dublin. I haven't been there. My childhood friends are there. So we're planning to have a get together. There. So these two things are there on the bucket list at the moment. They're a good thing to have skydiving. That's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. And how about yourself, Matthew? You have a little bit more time here in Ireland now. So what do you plan to see when you're here? Well, you know, I've been following uh, like on Instagram, like hashtag Ireland, hashtag Galway, hashtag, you know, everything. And so I get these photos of around Ireland. I'm like, oh, I want to check that out. I want to check this out. But, you know, while I was there, uh, we had the five kilometer lockdown, so I couldn't really travel too far. Um, but just within Galway, I want to check out Connemara and the West Coast. Um, I'm lucky I have been to Ireland a couple of times, mainly Kerry. Um, the, I recommend the Cliffs of Moher to anyone who hasn't been there. And Doolin, if you like Irish music. And what I'm most looking forward to, if it's possible, I really want to, in Galway to go to like a Kaylee session with some dancing. I'm an Irish dancer and I, I missed out on that in the spring. So I hope that dancing and music and festivities are back, hopefully, in the fall. Very cool. You're coming to the right place for it. Um, so for anybody who um, doesn't know Connemara, just to let you know, is an area in Galway. It's a Gaeltacht area, so it's an Irish speaking area, and it's to the west of the city along the coast. Um, and it's very rural, it's really beautiful. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just like stepping into a different part of Ireland in the same county um, and it's worth a visit. And they do, they, I suppose it's a little bit more traditional there as well. So you can do those things like speaking Irish or going to the bog or um, yeah, there's, there's those other, other things that you can do there. Um, so one of my questions are what clubs and societies have you or would you like to join? And I guess, Matthew, there's, there's lots of, you know, Irish dancing. Um, I think I'm pretty sure there's a society in the university, but there's also lots outside of the university as well. Yeah. Um, yeah there's, personally, oh, sorry, no, 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 go for it. I was just going to say there is a dance sock where they have some Irish dance. And I did join that, but I actually was more active in the trad sock and it was just traditional music. Um, and I also, I'm part of the Law Society too, but those are the three. Sorry, I cut you off, Cheval. You're all fine, like I did, yeah. So for Cheval, did you have, did you, did you wanna add something? Um, I was just gonna say, I didn't actually get super involved with the clubs and societies, but I was a student class rep um, for my international student class rep for years two and three. And I would recommend that to anyone that is um, wants to like develop their leadership skills and wants to get more involved and meet people in their year. I'm not sure how it works across all the courses, but I think that is definitely a thing in the College of um, Medicine and Health Sciences. 
Um, and I know that the tennis club is also really popular among students. I think it is just a little outside um, campus, I think closer to Salt Hill. But if you go for a walk along Salt Hill, I'm sure you can go out and play some tennis around there too. Yeah, and it's only about a 15 minute walk from the campus as well. It's good. Um, can you explain a little bit more about the class rep? Like what, what was the process involved in becoming a class rep and then what you had to do? Yeah, of course. Um, so basically at the start of every academic year, we, um, we had an election and they chose a female and a male um, international and Irish class rep. So there were about four of us every year. And we just had to give like a little short one minute speech and it was just an election process. And this position basically involved um, liaising between the school administration and the class. So generally for us, especially in medicine, it was that the students or our peers would um, ask us questions and then we would communicate um, to our professors directly um, just so their workload was reduced a little and we could kind of streamline the questions and whatever issues. Uh, because of COVID, we actually faced a lot of issues over the last two years um, and the admin was a bit crazy with everything. Um, but it was a really great way to meet people outside my normal friend circle and I think get to know a lot of people um, that I normally wouldn't have spoken to otherwise. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, and Amaya, did you, did you get to experience any clubs or societies or oh, even yeah. virtual yeah, so for me, it was mostly virtual. Um, so uh, I think I was part of the Indian society. Uh, and apart from that, the table tennis society. But uh, sadly, when I came in, uh, the Kingfisher was closed. So I could, uh, so they had all the events uh, at the club. So I couldn't really uh, be a part of that. But Indian society, I think they had a lot of um, cultural events, which they had online. So they used to give out free coupons uh, and everything for the winners and everything. So um, so I got to know about it because a lot of my friends were in that committee. So uh, uh, I think uh, most of the students would be part of some WhatsApp group or something like that, which they might have already got into. So I think these things become popular there once uh, either one of them become a part of any society. But I think uh, there are like a lot of groups and societies uh, available. Uh, there's a pastry society, which I know of. One of my friends was part of that. There's a Potter Sock um, for Potterheads if uh, people are a fan of Harry Potter. So. Uh, and then there's also a boating and rowing uh, because one of my friends had asked me to join that. So, uh, so I think if it opens up, I think these options would be really nice for the ones who would like to go there. So, sure. I think, and I think yeah. there's like 120 clubs and societies. So there's yeah. something for to cover every hobby and interest. Right. Um, yeah, it's nice. So uh, my next question is going to be, um, well, what's the best thing that you found about living in Galway, um, you know, in terms of the city or, you know, not necessarily the university, but actually like making a life here? Um, so, Amaya, do you, do you want to answer that question first? Uh, yeah. So I think the people here are really nice. Uh, uh, the difference which I found in Galway and Cork. So I stayed in Cork for three days, but I could sense a huge difference because uh, the culture is very different. Uh, uh, the city, it's not like a fast moving city. People here have time for you. Uh, people are nice, people will greet you. So uh, for a student, I think it's a perfect place to uh, cultivate themselves, I would say. Uh, 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 like you will find some, uh, like an old couple walking, they'll be like, hey, good morning, lad, how are you? So people will greet you at random. So uh, I had also once, uh, I think I'd written this blog in which I had mentioned about this uh, incident which happened with me. Uh, I got stuck near uh, Martin Island and a fisherman just uh, offered me a ride to Clara. So uh, I would say uh, people here are very uh, helpful. People are here for healthy conversations. So I think there's a lot of positive vibes. So I think culture and positive vibes is what makes Walvi different from, um, I think, other cities. So I think that's something which everybody can count on. That's my personal experience. That, that's really nice to hear, Maya. And I'm sure like welcoming for people who are about to move here as well. Um, and yeah. Math Matthew, you were here for a short time too. Is there anything that you found, you know, that was really good about living here while you were here? Um, I, I just say it's a pedestrian city. Um, you can really kind of walk anywhere you need to, to get what you need. Um, I lived close to Tesco 
um, which is where I would do my shopping. But if I didn't like Tesco, I could go to Dunn's, which is next door. Um, and just again, like it's a, I was surprised everyone drinks coffee. Um, you know, like you're walking around in the morning, everyone has a cup of coffee, everyone's out in the street. I, and I moved from some big cities and it was surprising. I think Amaya kind of touched on this. It's just, it's not too fast. Uh, everyone has time to be friendly, to enjoy themselves. Um, but it's also a working city too. Uh, it seems like everyone's always on their way to work in the morning. That's true. There is a nice balance between work and life here. Like you can do both successfully, I think. And I think that's what makes it such an attractive city to live in that you get to experience the best of both worlds, I think. Um, and Shival, do you have any anything else that you would like to add about uh, what's good about life in Galway? There's many, definitely many things. I think <laughs> um, out of the other two, I definitely got to experience about two years of pre-COVID life in Galway, um, which was some of the best times I've had. I think like the other said that it is very pedestrian. Everything's very accessible. I rarely found myself needing to catch taxis or public transport of any sort, which was really great. Um, in terms of other activities, I think it's really accessible to go watch movies at the cinemas. I think IMC was a bit further out of Galway City, but it's a lovely walk down. And I think Galway City Centre is super duper lively. Like there are always buskers on the streets. I'm not sure if that's the term that you guys call it. Um, but there's always music and everything. You, you just never feel bored and lonely in this city. And I found that it was personally quite safe to travel around. There are definitely times where I was by myself and I didn't feel afraid, which I feel like can be a concern for a lot of people. Obviously take precautions as required. Um, but I think that was just reassuring um, moving away from home and from a lot of loved ones. And yeah, the people are absolutely amazing and there is so much food to eat and cuisines to try. So you shouldn't get too bored with the options around you. That's good. And that's a lovely point that you make about safety because it is so important when you're moving to a new country. Um, but it does bring me on to my next question. And I suppose when you're moving somewhere, you want to hear the positive things, but you also want to be realistic and prepared. So Shival, was there anything that you found challenging about living in Galway? And if so, what did you, or do you have any advice to students how to overcome something that is a bit more challenging by living here? I think granted that COVID has probably made things a little difficult. Um, I would have said that friends made everything so much easier. So I think, as an international student, it's sometimes hard to put yourself out there, but I, but there will be so many other students in your position in your courses. So just trying to make friends and um, find people that you get along with will help um, that so much. Um, I think over my last few years, I can't say that I've had many negative aspects of Galway, surprisingly, and I'm saying that totally truthfully. Um, I don't think I probably made as much as... I made much of the experience as I could over the last few years. So I think that getting involved in clubs and societies and um, getting more fully immersed in the Irish lifestyle, whether it be learning the language or the dances, I think there is so much Ireland has to offer. So yeah, just making whatever experience you can. Um, Matthew, you know, you were here at probably one of the most challenging times for for everybody, but was there anything that you found particularly challenging that you reflect back on and think, okay, this is how I could overcome this, or this is actually what I did and made life so much better? Um, yes, I did have a challenging first two weeks uh, arriving in Galway. I will admit um, it was the height of like the COVID boom post Christmas. Though I got caught in a catch-22. Basically, I needed to quarantine for 14 days in my housing. And I was in student, not on campus, but student housing. So they were watching me. I was not leaving my room for 14 days. And they said, you must get delivered food. And the problem that I encountered was, in order to get food delivered to my apartment, I needed an Irish telephone number. 
in order to get an Irish telephone number, I needed an Irish bank account. And in order to get an Irish bank account, I needed to have an in-person meeting. So I found myself unable to get delivered food because of these three situations. So I highly recommend you get a SIM card um, for an Irish phone before you arrive to Ireland. I think that would be my number one recommendation. Thanks, Matthew. That's sound advice. And I remember this time last year, we had a lot of conversations of how do students get SIM cards if they are stuck for 14 days. So actually now this year, if students are using greet and transfer service from Dublin Airport, um, once you arrive, you check in at the greet and transfer desk, you will get a SIM card. We can activate that on the bus down to Galway. Um, so yeah, so it's great. So um, when you are coming to Ireland, you have to fill out your COVID passenger locator form. And you know, you also have to fill out the um, the arrivals form, the mandatory arrivals form. You have to put a number onto the passenger locator form. That way the government can phone you to say like, you know, are you feeling okay? Are you still in your accommodation? Um, and just they, they'll just check in with you periodically over your two weeks or five days or whatever it is. Um, once you come, you'll change your number to your Irish number. So there is an email address that you have to email to update them with your new Irish phone number. And I will I will put um, that email address in the chat box shortly so that you all know um, that you all know that you all have it. And I'll also pop it on our website just so that you all have it there too. Um, so Amaya, I'm going to ask you that question as well, and then we might take some questions. So were there any challenges for you? And do you have any advice on how to overcome some of the obstacles that would be involved with living in Galway? I think the biggest challenge for people would be uh, finding an accommodation at this point of time because of uh, uh, COVID. I think um, for me, uh, what worked out, I can tell you, uh, I sort of uh, interacted with the seniors uh, because what happens is, uh, we are afraid to um, with like uh, doing prepaid payments for uh, uh, for a house which we haven't really seen. So my suggestion on that would be um, try interacting with seniors who uh, are already staying there, and maybe um, if they have any leads, and if you know that person uh, like uh, through a via via contact or something, maybe uh, then you can take that leap of faith. Otherwise, uh, take a short term accommodation is what I'd say uh, at this point of time. Book a BNB or something because. Uh, what most of my friends and I faced was um, the house that you look for isn't really the one. Um, so if you just take a photo of a room with a wide angle view, the room might not look the same way um, when you actually land there. So, um, and then if you already have an agreement, you've already made the payments, then uh, it might be a bit of a concern. So uh, this might be one uh, aspect which I would like to highlight on. And uh, for uh, like people coming from India, I think weather is something which might be a bit of a challenge because it keeps changing uh, in every few hours, I would say. So uh, uh, be prepared, I would say, whenever you're traveling. Um, for me, that that has been one key point. I always carry my uh, weatherproof jacket with me all the times and waterproof shoes. Because if it uh, rains, maybe uh, like a canvas shoot, shoes might not be the best option for you when you're walking outside. So uh, these are like the two highlights, which I would say. The rest, I think, um, You'll all have your own elements which you come here, like those um, let universe surprise you, I would say. So being, right. um, yeah, that's it. That's all from my side. Thanks, Leah. And can I just ask, how did you connect with your seniors on your way over here? Or how would you advise students to do it? Uh, so uh, I had like, I mostly up, uh, approached everyone through LinkedIn. And then, uh, so some way or the other, we always have one person who is in Ireland. And maybe um, for me that worked out. One of my friends was here in Ireland. She was in Dublin, so she connected with few uh, like few of her her friends in NUI Galway, and then uh, but they uh, like they were not really that helpful. So what I did was I just connected with some people on LinkedIn. Uh, uh, one of them luckily had one of uh, a vacancy in their house, so he suggested me that they could stay there for quarantine. They were allowing for fourteen day period, so uh, that's and he spoke with his landlord. So that how that's how it worked for me. Uh, so I think LinkedIn is a good uh, way of connecting with people. And uh, I'm not entirely sure how active people are on Facebook at the moment, uh, but you can't really know if they have marked themselves as uh, students at NUI Galway. So it would be difficult to uh, identify, whereas I think LinkedIn would be a better measure. Yeah. 
yeah I think I think you're right there with that one it's and it's so hard to approach people too and say oh yeah. are you a student and would you be willing to help me out but what we could do is we could see if there are any students available who know they're leaving their accommodation we can ask them to post in the Facebook right, group right, right. if they yeah. are so that's for our incoming students so um so we can try and put you in touch with some students thanks Amaya so I might jump into the questions now and I might fire some questions at you all so we will start with um actually this one I, I can answer this one. Are there, is there any news on campus reopening from the university side? I did see some news about campus reopening being on track from the government of Ireland. Any info will be helpful. So thanks, Shreta. There, um, the latest is that there will be as much on-campus activity as possible with some um, hybrid virtual work, like, like maybe the larger lectures will be, um, will be done virtually and then and um, smaller groups will be face to face. I think there's going to be a video released in a couple of weeks about what it will actually look like. So um, that's the latest I have for now, but keep an eye. Once we get that information, we will share it with you, of course. So um, Cheval, I know you answered the questions like this. Like this. Uh, are there theatres and cinema halls in Ireland and are they open now? Uh, yes, I think from memory there are two. I generally went to IMC, which is um, closer to like the Tesco and down the road over there. So you can kind of quickly get some snacks and there's some McDonald's and then you can hop in for a movie and it was really great uh, kind of situation. And they the tickets are generally pretty affordable. I think there is one night in the week where you had cheaper tickets. So I think students generally went for that as well. Yeah. Um, and in terms of theatre, then yes, there's a good few theatres around the city. Um, you know, it's a really uh, cultural city, so there's often lots of plays, there's film festival, um, and there's loads of performances throughout the year. So I'd recommend having a look at the Galway, um, the Galway Arts Festival, the International Arts Festival website, and um, that will have a listing of a lot of performances on through the next a um, couple of months. The festival is normally held for two weeks in July, but actually because of COVID, it's been postponed and it's in August and September. They generally have something on throughout the year anyway, so you'll be able to find lots of live performance there. And then as Mayo was saying, or sorry, as Cheval was saying, there is um, there's cinemas as well close by. So, um, Matthew, are there clubs in the university to learn Irish language? Um, yes, so there is an Irish language club, I believe, but the SU actually just got a lot of money um, or funding to support Irish language for um, students, especially international students. So if you are interested in learning Irish, that's awesome, uh, I, as am I. I know they're going to have programs for classes and I think they will be free. So if you are at all interested, um, Keep posted to the Students' Union, either Instagram. I'd, I I would recommend everyone follow the SU Instagram, honestly. N-U-I-G-S-U, I believe it is. Um, so short answer is yes, especially this year. There will be more Irish language um, options. Um, and it's a bilingual university, so the Irish language is really important to the university. So there's always like opportunity to engage with something through Irish as well, if you want to. Um, so somebody has asked, how do you apply to be a student ambassador and what's the process? So we will recruit student ambassadors um, from about the 1st of October. There will be, um, you, you'll submit a form plus some content, like you might submit a blog post and a video introducing yourself. Um, and then that will, that will be a kind of mini interview process. Um, and it's a great program. Well, I think it is anyway, and I hope our ambassadors thought so too. Uh, we had lots of activity together throughout the year. Um, there were training sessions. We had um, students join us at events like this or at other kinds of recruitment events. Um, we had meetups. We had a few games um, like the Culture Through Comedy event, which some of you may have attended last week. So there'll be plenty to do. And I'm hoping then 
um, over the next year, there'll be a lot more in-person activity, and a lot more opportunity to uh, work with us with our incoming students and also to do things, fun things like be part of video and photo shoots, which some of our ambassadors have done this year. So I'll be in touch with you in maybe September about this program. Um, you'll have plenty to set up before then anyway, keep you busy. Um, so Amaya, how do you spend your weekends in Galway and what are the most things to do in the city centre? Uh, I think most of my week weekends are uh, when currently I'm working part time. So I normally go for sunrise in the morning. So it's uh, so for the last three weekends, I've done that. Uh, I've got up at five at 5.50, uh, the sunrise uh, starts. So I have done that dedicatedly for the last three weeks. So uh, and speaking of uh, what can be done at city center, I would say Spanish Arc is a very good place where you can just sit with a pint of guineas or a coffee. Uh, that's a person's choice. So uh, uh, I think that's a good place to chill out. And also Burki. So um, there's uh, a place uh, called as Burki. It's near the docks. So um, you can just sit there uh, with a book or with a with your laptop. Uh, I think it's a pleasant time for you to sp spend your weekend because I think uh, with after the uh, I think uh, e evening onwards it it gets all lively. Uh, you'll find uh, people with uh, beers, music, everything begins. You uh, with 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 the restrictions being uplifted now. I think it has become uh, uh, more uh, often like people have been partying now. So. You'll get to um, enjoy the culture and the vibes now at the moment. So uh, I think, and pl plus the pubs, the outdoor seating has opened up and they're allowing people to sit inside the pubs for um, the ones who are vaccinated. So uh, I think that's for now, uh, which I can think of the highlighting points, which I can tell you. So highlighting points would be sitting, going for walks, uh, sitting near Spanish Arc, Wurki and pubs. That's all I can say at, at the moment. Lovely. Um, I and there's yeah, there's so much to do and there's so much to see. Even people watching in the city is lovely. Nice. Um, for me, a highlight of my weekend is always the Galway Market as well. I don't know if you've ever been there, Maya. Um, no, I haven't, but I have. It's it's on my list. I yeah, haven't been. There. I was gonna say it was. I was just about to say it's my favorite part of every weekend on Saturdays and Sundays in the morning. And they have really good pesto dip out there if you get around to it. <laughs> I haven't tried that one, but I go there for the donuts, <laughs> the fresh donuts. But there's lots of fresh food and food stalls. You know, your organic veg. Um, somebody asked me recently, is it easy to be a vegan or a vegetarian in Galway? And I would say yes. And, and you know, the market is a really good example of um, all kinds of cuisines and produce available in one area. Um, so this is a question for three of our ambassadors. They don't know your situation. Can you bike when it rains and do the streets get inundated? Is it really slippy or wet? Do, do any of the three of you bike? Uh, I'll, I'd like to answer that question. So, um, uh, so it's not easy to bike when it's raining. So I would suggest uh, if, if the weather's not good, like take a bus is, is my, um, because it did happen with me once and with my friend. So he fell uh, while he was, um, he actually slipped while he was uh, riding his bike um, and he uh, injured himself really bad. So uh, at this point of time, maybe if it's raining, I would suggest um, it's not really a good idea because it's also windy at times. So it's difficult to bike. But otherwise, um, uh, I don't really think there should be any problem uh, for, uh, for bikers here. But only like being cautious at this point of time is something which I would suggest. Uh, there's lots of cycle lanes in some parts of the city. In other parts of the city, there aren't cycle lanes. So I think being more mindful of where it's, I suppose, a bit safer to cycle as well is important. Um, so are there involvement fairs where students can choose between clubs that interest them? And how does it work if a student wants to be part of a certain club? So Shafal, maybe you were the one that had the in-person version of this. You want to share, or did you ever go to the, the clubs there? Yeah, I did. I actually went, um, I think, 
two times. So the first two years, uh, they have a massive, massive hall and every club and society has a little stall and you can go up and sign up for clubs and find out a little bit about what's going on, uh, which is a really great way to see what options you have. And I don't think there is an actual limitation to how many things you can join. Uh, so anything you absolutely have any sort of interest in, I'm sure you'll find it in that um, fairs and uh, club society. And I think they, they might cost like two euro or five euro or something to join. Some of them are free. Some of them are, have a small sign up fee, but then it's generally free to attend any of the clubs as well, unless it's a bigger activity like, I don't know, going away for the weekend or, you know, renting equipment for something. So, but, but generally they're free. I think also because of COVID, they were doing virtual fairs. So I don't know if that's actually going to happen this year or, or if it's going to be in person but there's always going to be something on. Yeah, absolutely. There will definitely be opportunities to find out about all of the clubs and societies and to become involved as well. Um, so maybe, Matthew, I'll ask you this one. Um, how did you, or did you get homesick? And if you did, how did you handle it? You know, looking back on it, <clears throat> excuse me, I might have been a little homesick last year. Um, you know, because I didn't have any friends in Galway at all. <laughs> um, so I really uh, video chats with my friends on Instagram. I was probably a pester. Like, you know, I would reach out and I had some good friends just, you know, <clears throat> even just hearing their voice, seeing their face for a minute or two or like sharing a virtual beer or something like that kind of put me back in place. Because when you don't know anyone, it can be hard. But I will recommend <clears throat> what I did. I joined the students' union. I became a class rep. I just tried to throw myself into anything I could to meet anyone in Galway. Um, and now I'm going to be super involved this next year uh, as the international students officer in the, in the law society. I'm going to be the treasurer. And I've now I've kind of put everything on my plate. Um, so I just recommend getting involved, um, whether that's virtually or in person. It'll be the opposite for you, Matthew. This year, you'll be too busy. You'll be too busy. You'll, you'll have too many things to do. But it is always the way when you move to a new country and it's so uncomfortable, like no matter, I think, what age you are from a child to like fully grown, like you really have to put yourself out there. You have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to be awkward. You have to say, you know, hey, will we get a coffee? Instead of waiting for an invitation, you know, you have to kind of, I don't know, push a little bit, but then it, it, it comes back to you and fades and you end up making like really good friends from it. So yeah, I think you do have to kind of put yourself out there. Well, I would just recommend also, whether you meet in person or not, um, create a WhatsApp group, even if it's with one other person, who's in your class, someone you can just make sure you're on the same page, make sure you have this right assignment, uh, because ultimately we're here to succeed in school as well. Um, a couple of questions have come in about the greet and transfer, the arrivals form and the SIM card. So I might just explain that again um, and refer you back to our website as well for another um, read through if you want in your own time where it explains it all um, but so so what you need to do when you come to Ireland and you'll have received an email from me that says before you in, uh, arrive in Ireland your requirements so all the forms that you need are in that section and in the text below in your emails so you will have a COVID-19 passenger locator form to fill out so that's a government required form that they need your accommodation details they need your mobile number where you're traveling from and why you're in Ireland and that's so the government can follow up with you make sure you're you know quarantining as you should be um, to protect you know the community so that's the COVID-19 passenger locator form then we also have the greet and transfer arrivals form okay this is the mandatory form for all students who are traveling into Ireland, whether you intend to use the service or not. So basically, this is also about your details coming into Ireland, 
but it's a bit more specific. It wants to know what date you're coming in, what your flight number is, um, you know, if you transited through any airports coming to Ireland. And this is to, um, I suppose, make everybody aware of what your quarantine situation needs to be. If you need to do mandatory hotel quarantine or if you need to do self-isolation, these are two separate things. So mandatory hotel quarantine is government mandated um, it, it's managed by the government and it's for students, particular students from designated states or in different vaccination situations. The self quarantine then is from people from certain countries, depending on their vaccination status, but it, it is, it's not, um, you can self quarantine in your house or in your student accommodation or in the university accommodation. So you need to check your situation out on our website. Um, there's an education and infograph by a company called Education in Ireland, who are um, an education partner with us. And it's a really handy way to, to find out what you need to do when you come here. So I'd recommend everybody to look at that. So we have the COVID-19 passenger locator form and then the greet and transfer service. So the greet and transfer service will take into account your uh, details, which I just mentioned, your quarantining status, depending on which it is, and where you need to go once you get to Ireland. So there is a bus that's going from the airport, from Dublin airport to Galway. So you can take this bus and it will drop you off at some of the university accommodations or at the cathedral. Um, and you can then take a taxi from the cathedral to your accommodation. Um, you will also have received a link from me with a, a voucher for a, a taxi journey. So it, there's eight euro um, to cover costs that you might need to get across the city to go to your student accommodation from Galway Cathedral. Um, so those two forms are really important. Even if you intend to make your own way to Galway, you still need to fill out the, the passenger locator form. You still need to fill out the greet and transfer service form because it just lets us know that you are arriving into Galway on this date and where you are. And we want to know that you're here. We want to know that you've got here safe. And if for whatever reason you're not coming or you don't make it, you know, we might be alerted and can, can check up with you to make sure that everything is okay. The other form that you will have received is the accommodation form. This is separate. This is only if you intend to take NUI Galway campus accommodation. The greet and transfer form does not book your accommodation. So it's really important that if you're gonna take accommodation in the university accommodation, you fill out the separate booking link. Okay, so you need to fill out the COVID-19 passenger locator form. You need to fill out the greet and transfer form. Once you get to the airport, you will go through immigration. The greet and transfer desk is there. You'll go up to them and say, hi, hello, I've just arrived in Ireland and I'm going to Galway and they'll give you a SIM card and tell you what bus to take, depending on what time you get in at. Um, and that desk is manned for the most part of the day. Um, and if you fill out your um, arrival information, our colleagues at the Greek Transfer Desk will be keeping an eye out for you. So, um, you know, don't worry if your flight lands 20 minutes late, they're aware that you're going to be there. So you can, um, you know, they'll be, they'll be looking out for you and your SIM card will be there for you. I see a few more questions coming in about this now. I'm going to try and answer them. Some of them I might need to answer by email. I might need to check some information, but let's see what we can do. Um, okay. If you tick the box on the form that you want help with getting to go away from Dublin, will the corresponding body contact one or are we still to book the coach ourselves? No, this form will book the bus for you. They'll arrange a space on the bus for you. Um, the SIM card, we've got relating to the SIM card, what carrier will it be under? It's under Vodafone. Um, they're a very reasonable um, network. They've got coverage and yeah, it's a good one to be with. It's not mandatory. Um, the Irish SIM card is not mandatory. 
I think if you have a European um, SIM card, you might have some, you know, free roaming. You, you can you can use this. That's not a problem. Some forms, you know, if you're, I don't know how delivery works. It might you might only be able to put an Irish mobile number. So if you find that when you get here, maybe it might be more convenient to get an Irish phone number. You can easily pick up a SIM card. Um, in a few shops throughout the city. They're not hard to come by. Um, okay, so there has there is a question. Are there Indian Asian shops for getting groceries? And what's something that we should be definitely getting from India is not available in Galway? Okay, Amaya, would you like to answer that one? Uh, yes, so uh, you have a lot of Indian shops here, so Asian grocery stores. So I would suggest that just bring the spices. Uh, uh, however, even if uh, you run out of stock, you'll find everything here. So uh, it's not much of a problem. So just the basic spices, which you might need for the initial few months. So everything else is available here. So uh, I don't think so that should be a problem for anyone. And there's one shop uh, at Isle Square. There's one at West Side that's called as Upic and Aroma. They're like two shops which are quite popular. And there's a, a Asian African store near Isle Square. I don't remember the name. But that's also quite popular. So the, uh, the grocery should not be a problem for you. I think we've answered all the questions. If there is anything else, feel free to uh, pop them into the chat box or even, uh, yeah, you could unmute yourself and, and say hello. Um, but if there's anything in particular, you know, do send me an email. My email address is there um, and I'd be happy to try to help you as best I can. Um, I've just received one more question. Um, the coach that is booked for, for us from Dublin to Galway, will we be dropped to Goldcrest or at another location? It will drop you to Goldcrest, Goldcrest. So it stops at GMIT. Um, which is another college in in um, Galway, but there's a lot of accommodation near there. It will drop you to Goldcrest and it will drop you to Carb Village uh, and it will stop at the cathedral. So I think it goes GMIT, the cathedral. So you'll get off there if you're staying in your own accommodation, then it goes to Goldcrest, then the last stop is Carb Village. And um, yeah, if you're traveling anywhere other than uh, those accommodations, you can get off at the cathedral, you can use the Galway taxi voucher to book your taxi and um, you have, you must do this through the app, but that's detailed in the last email that I sent you. So all of the, the form is there, which you'll need to print off um, and how to use the form and the app is detailed there as well. Um, if we face a problem filling out the passenger locator form, who should we contact? So that is the passenger locator form is the government form. Um, so I'll actually, um, Lake, if you want to email me and I'll find you, I'll get you the contact for that um, and who you can get in touch with. So um, I'd like to say thank you all so much for joining us and a special thanks to Amaya Cheval and Matthew. Um, especially for joining us today. Uh, it was great to get your experiences. So thank you. And we'll be holding another one of these meetups um, shortly and we'll post the information again on the Facebook group. So yeah, so safe journeys here and we'll speak to you all soon. Good luck. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck, everyone.